All right, happy day after 4th of July. All right, I am checking in with you on a personal note and I'm checking in with you to kind of do a public service announcement. So what I wanna share with you is I'm on the last week now of the No Scale Challenge and I've taken it and upped my game. I had my initial list of goals, which was a calorie goal, um, not nibbling, which I've gotten really good with, um, weighing all my food, staying consistent with my water and my fitness. But then I started really thinking about taking it to the next level. And I have been working on paying attention to eating when I'm hungry, stopping when I'm full. And it has been a fun experiment. Uh, yesterday on the 4th of July, I ate half of my dinner salad that I had planned to have. And I left some zucchini on my plate at lunch. And this has kind of been the thing that's been happening is, um, often not always but my eyes are bigger than my belly like i see the food on the plate i start eating it i start to notice i feel that sense of satiation and i coach myself through it i say hey heather you know what you can stop we can box this up as a matter of fact my salad from last night's still in the fridge and you can come back and have this if you're hungry positive allowing not oh good you didn't eat half your salad you'll lose more weight <laughs> Like I'm really working on being positive, reinforcing. And then when I am not hungry, I remind myself, it's okay. Um, you know, you can eat later or, you know, you could have a little less or whatever. And I'm using positive words with myself. I'm really trying to keep it good. And then when I stop eating early because I'm satiated, I remind myself I can eat again in another couple hours. So I'm doing a lot of positive coaching, really working on it. And it's been going great because even though I'm tracking my calories after the fact so i'm eating the food weighing and measuring it but then if i leave half of it i'm not going to figure out how much i didn't eat i just track it as if i had eaten the whole thing so my calories are not exact but it doesn't really matter what i'm really learning here is sometimes the food i plan for myself volume wise might be more than what my body needs not always but sometimes and this brings a better point which is be willing to learn about yourself don't think the things you're doing today whether they be hard or easy is what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life to be willing to experiment with yourself be willing to learn about yourself you're a constantly ever growing ever learning um, person who is not the same day to day year to year so allow yourself to try new things now let's talk about the fourth of july Here's lessons I have learned that have served me really well. Once you have a celebration, especially if it's at your house, you want to clean up the home the night of the event. You want to send home the extra cookies, the extra brownies, the pie. So here's what it looked like in my house last night. Guess I'll leave. My husband looks at me and says, Heather, there's a thing of cookies that was left behind. Get rid of those because I will continue to nibble at them. What you also want to realize is your environment greatly dictates how you eat. If you leave a tray of cookies out, if you leave out half-eaten pies, in the morning when you come down, you might be eating pie for breakfast because you know what? It's there. You have to be realistic about your tendencies and how things are difficult for you when they're just laying out. So last night, I threw out a piece of pie that was left behind. I took the cookies, I put them in three separate Ziploc bags for my kids and I hid them behind other things. Cause you know what? Our brain is very funny. What we see is what we wanna eat. So if all we see are fruits and vegetables, we'll eat them cause they're there. If we see cookies and pie on the counter, we'll eat them because they are there. Even if they don't serve us, even if they don't help us with our goals. So over the years I've done this, what I've learned is my environment can either be supportive or it can be destructive to my goals. I get to choose. But notice I did this last night. I don't wake up the next day to face that decision. Because if I do, I may not make the best decision. It may get left out, lunch happens, we're starting nibbling at it, the kids ask for cookies. Whereas now they're all out of sight, out of mind. The kids can totally have the cookies, but I'll pull out those bags after dinner for their designated treat time, right? 
and we won't all be picking at them all day because they struggle too. I mean, you know, my kids saw the tray of cookies and of course they're fascinated by all the cookies. And so it's not that they can't have them. It's just them physically being out and available makes a big, big difference. So here's what we can walk away from today's talk with. One, allow yourself to grow and morph in this journey. Don't feel like you have to be this stagnant person who is a certain way, does a certain thing. You can grow and change and learn. Two, pay attention to how you do the day after an event. Make sure your home is supportive of your goals. Do not leave highly palatable, sweet, calorie-dense foods or salty uh, calorie-dense foods out and about. Make sure you pack them away, preferably out of sight, meaning they're in an opaque container, top shelf where you don't go all that often, hidden behind the broccoli (laughs) where you don't see them. And I know you're thinking to yourself, but Heather, that seems ridiculous. I'm a grown person. I know those cookies are there. There's a difference psychologically between knowing they're there and seeing them constantly. So you need to set yourself up for success. I hope you guys had a great celebration if you, if you were doing that yesterday. If not, take this little bit of information, store it away for the next celebration you have at your home or that you're invited to. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you soon.